Today we're going to be talking about photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is nothing more than a process. The process by which we're going to take the energy of sunlight and store it in the chemical bonds of glucose. Photosynthesis consists of two series of chemical reactions. The first series of chemical reactions is called the light dependent reactions. The second series is going to be called the light independent reactions because it can occur with or without light. We're first going to concentrate on the light dependent reactions. Over here I've drawn a chloroplast and the chloroplast consists of stacks of thylakoid membranes. What we're going to do is take one of these thylakoid membranes, one of these thylakoids, and I'm going to take a section of it, take a section of the thylakoid membrane right here, and enlarge it. And whatever happens here happens everywhere else in the thylakoid membrane. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by drawing the thylakoid membrane, which I've already drawn, and with a little perspective, this is going to be the chloroplast stroma, and this is going to be the thylakoid space, right there, inside. I'm going to first start by drawing a transport protein. This transport protein is going to be called cytochrome BF complex. And then over here we're going to have another enzyme complex. This one's going to be called ATP synthase. So let's go ahead and name that ATP synthase. The next thing we want to draw is our photosystems. So here's a photosystem. And this is going to be the reaction center inside the photosystem. So we'll call this one photosystem 2. Photosystem 2. It consists of chlorophyll molecules. Hundreds to even thousands of chlorophyll molecules. In the center is called a reaction center. This is where all the energy is going to get channeled. Now over here we have another photosystem. And another reaction center. This is going to be called photosystem, and I'll abbreviate it, PS, photosystem 2. I mean 1. This is going to be called photosystem 1. And this is again another reaction center. Now, this is called Photosystem 1, even though everything starts over here, because this was the first one to be discovered. Unfortunately, later on they discovered Photosystem 2, and unfortunately for us, it actually comes first. But, in science, whatever is named first is named first, and that name sticks. So, this is going to be Photosystem 2, and this is going to be Photosystem 1. In addition to this, we have a few other proteins. We're going to have another protein right here. And this protein is going to be called NADP plus reductase. Now those are our major proteins. What we need to do now is have some electron carriers because the electrons can't get from this protein to that protein to that protein to that protein without some help. So we're going to have some electron carrier molecules. And I'm going to put them right here. There's one, there's another one, and there's another one. And they all have names. This one right here is going to be called P sub Q plastoquinone. This one right here, PC, is known as plastocyanin. And the last one, which contains iron, FD, is ferredoxin.
Now, let's go ahead and get started with the details. The first thing that's going to happen is sunshine is going to fall on this thylakoid membrane. And I'm going to show it coming down right here. Now sunshine is actually falling everywhere on the thylakoid membrane, but the only place it's really going to get absorbed is in these photosystems. So that's the only place I'm actually going to show the uh, sunshine coming in for clarity. When the sunshine falls on this photosystem right here, the chlorophyll molecules are going to absorb the energy. And they're going to funnel all that energy towards the center, called a reaction center. All that energy gets funneled right towards the center to an area known as the reaction center. And in the reaction center, two electrons are going to be waiting for that energy. And when that energy gets funneled into those two electrons, they become highly energized, very excited. And in fact, they're going to become so excited that they're actually going to leave the photosystem altogether. And they're going to be leaving in pairs of two, two at a time. So there's our two electrons, and they're leaving. Now they can't just leave and go anywhere. They're actually going to get attached to plastoquinone first, our electron carrier molecule. That's going to pick up these two energized electrons and move them over to cytochrome BF complex. In cytochrome BF complex, we're going to siphon off a little bit of the energy that these two electrons have, and we're going to use that energy to pump protons. And we're going to pump protons, or actively transport protons, into the thylakoid space. So that's where our protons are going to go. They're going to end up in the thylakoid space. Because every time a pair of electrons moves through this cytochrome BF complex, we actively transport protons, we're going to build up a high concentration of protons in the thylakoid space. And in the chloroplast stroma, where we're constantly taking protons from, we're going to have a low proton concentration. This is good because now we have a concentration gradient. We can actually do work, work required to make ATP. So after our two electrons pass through the cytochrome BF complex, they get picked up by plastocyanin, which then carries them over to photosystem 1. In photosystem 1, more sunshine falls on the photosystem and gets absorbed by it. And these two electrons get further energized. So they're very excited. They're highly energized electrons at this point. These electrons are then going to get picked up by ferredoxin, which contains iron. Ferrous. Ferrous is a, a Latin word that means iron. They're going to get picked up by iron, ferredoxin. And from here, they're going to get shuttled over to NADP plus reductase. Now, NADP plus reductase is an enzyme. And as its name implies, this enzyme is going to reduce this carrier molecule called NADP+. Think of it as a large truck that's going to pick up some high energy cargo. And this enzyme is going to take these two high energy electrons and place them on NADP+. When that occurs, NADP+, is reduced to NADPH. This is one of the goals of the light dependent reactions to produce NADP+. This is a high energy carrier molecule. Its job is to carry two high energy electrons and a proton to the next set of chemical reactions called the light independent reactions, which we'll talk about next. Now we're not done yet. These protons are looking for a way out. Remember, we have a high proton concentration here. They're looking for a way out. And there's only one way out for these protons. They're going to come over here, and they're going to go up through ATP synthase. Because we're going to have a flowing river of hydrogen ions here, due to the difference in concentration, this is going to constitute a proton motive force. So I'll write that down, a proton motive force. And we're going to tap this flowing river of hydrogen ions for some energy. 
And in doing so, we're going to take ATP, well, ADP, plus an inorganic phosphate, and convert it to ATP. It turns out that the energy of this flowing river of hydrogen ions, we're going to take some of that energy and we're going to store it in the chemical bond between the last two phosphate groups of ATP. So the chemical bond we create between this phosphate and adenosine diphosphate, that chemical bond is going to be storing some energy that this proton motive force contained. And that's going to be our second goal of the light dependent reactions. So the two goals of the light dependent reactions is to make NADPH and ATP. The energy stored in these two molecules ultimately in our next series of chemical reactions is going to get stored in the chemical bonds of glucose. Now we have one last thing to cover. If we go back to the beginning here where we had sunshine land on our photosystem, two electrons got ejected. They, they, uh, they got so much energy that they actually left the photosystem. Now if this keeps happening over and over and over, we're going to lose electrons until finally there's no more left. So nature came up with a way around this. What we're going to do is actually grab a water molecule. There's plenty of water molecules all around this area. So we're going to grab a water molecule and that water molecule is going to get split. It's going to get split into two electrons, two protons, and an oxygen atom. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two electrons and these two electrons are going to replace the ones lost initially. The two hydrogen ions are ultimately going to contribute to the high hydrogen ion concentration in the thylakoid space. And the oxygen here can go two places. One, it can be used for cellular respiration, because plants also carry out cellular respiration. They have mitochondria. And any excess oxygen is going to be given off as a waste product through the stomata. And that's going to be it for the light-dependent reactions.